Hello, Dr. Tarek. Nice to meet you again. How are you today? Nice to meet you. I'm very well, Solo. Thank you for this meeting. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. A lot of my viewers are interested in investing in UK properties, but many of them have some concerns. They are not familiar with the market. They know there are regulations that need to follow. So uh, I know you are an expert in this area for many years. Could you tell us uh, what are the most common problems encountered by landlords in UK? Well, landlords have three categories of problems. Uh, problems with tenants, with costs, and with liabilities. Uh, the main problem with the tenants, of course, is that they don't pay the rent, or they can damage the property, or they can leave the property in a very poor condition so that it remains vacant for a long time. In relation to costs, of course, you have the letting agent or the property management company's fees, which can be 15% plus VAT. You have regular annual compliance costs like gas certificates, electrical certificates, fire safety and inspections. And then you have repairs and maintenance as another cost because there may be a leak, the boiler may go faulty, uh, there may be other repairs that need doing. And of course, you need to re-renovate the property every time the tenants move. So that is another cost. And then you have the liabilities. Um, you know, as a, a landlord in the UK, you are responsible for making sure that the property is safe to live in and is of a good standard. And you also have liabilities to the tenant. Uh, you know, you have uh, uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, there are no issues with the tenant becoming unwell because of the condition of the property. So these are the main things, uh, you know, the, land, the tenant issues, the costs and the liabilities. There are indeed a lot of problems that uh, landlords need to face. So I understand that your business uh, provides a solution for passive investors to invest in UK properties without so much worry. Could you tell us more about your business, about your solution, and what you can offer to uh, the potential investor in UK properties? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'll tell you what we do uh, to begin with. Uh, we buy properties in good areas. We renovate them to a good standard, new kitchen, new bathroom, fully decorated, uh, make them compliant, and then rent them out to good long-term tenants. And then what we do is we sell it as an investment solution to our investor clients. Uh, and we give contractual guarantees on the property and the buying process. The investor then owns the property, but what they do is they rent it back to us so that we become the tenant of the investor and we agree to maintain that property at our own cost and deal with all the liabilities of the tenant because we are the acting landlord. They become the passive investor owner. Uh, and this uh, sort of system basically removes all of the landlord worries we talked about uh, earlier, you know, the tenant issues, the costs, because they are no cost because we pay for all of it. And there's no liabilities because we are the landlord, not the passive owner. And the owner gets their regular net rental income directly from us. Over the long term, their property grows in value and they don't have any issues or headaches. So it is a good solution and our clients really like it. What is the rental yield we are talking about? Well, the rental yield which we offer on our flexi furnished range, which is the most popular right now, is 7% net. That means they get 7% after all costs. There are no costs because we pay for all of those. Uh, the only thing they're liable for is the insurance, which is about 100 to 150 pounds per year. But apart from that, there are zero costs uh, long-term. And every repair, every maintenance, even the re-renovation is our liability. So, mm. so that is a net net rent of 7%. Mm. You just mentioned the term flexi furnish. Could you elaborate more on what it means exactly? Yeah, so just to summarize, we, we have eight categories of properties from 70,000 to 120,000. And each of those can be per, uh, purchased unfurnished or as a flexi furnished property. Now, flexi furnished properties are a bit more expensive. They're 6,000 pounds more, but they deliver the higher net rental yield. And from our point of view, what flexi furnished designation means is that we can furnish that property according to the needs of the tenant to maximize our rent. So practically what we do is we uh, renovate the property and then we invite the tenant uh, to look at the property, which is unfurnished, 
and we say to the tenant, will you pay us a higher rent if we furnish this property according to your requirements? And some tenants will say to us, yes, I want everything furnished and I want white goods as well. And then we will do that and we will charge them maybe 150 pounds, 200 pounds extra rent. Others might say, I just need the bedroom furniture. I have everything else. So we just do that and we charge them a higher, uh, a slightly higher rent. And some will say, I don't need anything. I have everything. Or they might say, I don't want to pay any more. Uh, in which case we won't furnish it. We will just keep the furniture in the stores because there is a cost to us uh, of furnishing and maintaining furniture. And we pay all those costs, not the investor. Uh, so what we want to do is minimize our costs, maximize our profit so that we can always give the investor 7% net yield. And we do that even when the flexi furnished property is not furnished. They still get their 7% net return. So it's a very good system and you know it works well uh, for our investor clients, they get a higher investment, works well for us, we can make more margin. And the tenant is happy because they have a property which is suited to their long-term requirements. It seems to be a pretty good deal for me and it sounds like a win-win-win solution. So what about the price of the properties? How do they compare with other properties as shown on like uh, Right Move and Supra? Well, when you take everything into account, uh, the price which our investor clients pay for our properties is actually lower. Initially, uh, when you look at the initial pricing, our prices might seem more expensive. You know, an investor sometimes comes to me and says, I can buy from uh, an auction uh, this property which you're selling for £70,000. I can get it for £50,000. And I say to them, well, when you buy it for £50,000 from the auction, you have costs. Uh, you have auction fees, then you have to re-renovate that property. You put a new kitchen, uh, repair the roof, uh, you know, new bathroom. And these costs, as a minimum on a low cost property is around 15 to 16,000 pounds. And then you have to make it compliant. You have to rent it to good tenants. And then you, you know, we guarantee the properties, no costs ever. So when you take all of those additional things into account, our pricing is actually lower than what an investor could do by buying themselves in the open market or using another agent. And not many people realize that, but you know, when they actually add up the costs, then they see that we are actually cheaper. And that we have actually a table on our website which compares buying in the open market from right move, Zoopla, auctions to buying from us over the long term. We are cheaper. It makes perfect sense to me. Uh, some Potential property investor also worry about the future policy change. Now that the Labour uh, Party is in the government, they uh, they have announced or are preparing to uh, implement some policy, new policies. So, what in your view that these new policies would uh, affect uh, future uh, investment uh, opportunity and risk? Yeah, I mean, a lot of uh, investors and, and owners have been worried about what Labour might do. But actually, when you actually look at the detail, uh, in fact, it is going to be beneficial for our company uh, and indirectly for our investor clients. Uh, the reason is Labour is going to invest more into the lower end of the housing market, which is the market we operate in. Uh, and specifically, they are going to do four key things. You know, they're going to abolish Section 21 no-fault evictions. Now, practically, we never use those anyway. We only use Section 8. Uh, so it's not really going to affect uh, us uh, or our investor clients. We can still, uh, you know, the tenant will still vacate the property if the investor wants to live in the property. They can still sell the property. We will buy back the property at the prevailing market price whenever our investor clients want to sell. They're not tied to us, but they can they can sell. So it doesn't really limit us or our investor clients. The second thing is that labor is going to raise the housing standards. Now, our renovated properties are already at that standard and our flexi furnished range is exceeding that standard. Uh, you know, it makes, you know, houses into homes for our tenants. So we're already doing that. And the third thing is they're going to make uh, properties more energy efficient, which is a good thing. And we've been actually doing this for many years now. All of our properties, which customers are buying now, 
when we upgrade, when we renovate the property, we upgrade it to EPC grade C. And even our base of two and a half thousand properties, we started several years ago. Every time the tenants move, we do a re-renovation and we upgrade the EPC to a grade C. The cost of upgrading uh, to, to us is actually very low because we have our own staff uh, doing it. Uh, uh, you know, we don't use contractors, which can be expensive. We use our own staff. We have our own materials. So we can do that very easily. And well before the deadline, whatever that deadline is, I think people are saying 2030 for labor. Mm -hmm. Well before that, all of our properties will be grade C or better. And even if the, you know, the legislation changes in the future and uh, the government says it has to be a grade B, then we will upgrade our properties to grade B at our cost because we are responsible for all the compliance. So uh, we will not need to ask our investor clients for any money to upgrade the properties uh, from a compliant point of view. Yeah. That's really good news. So uh, regarding the legal compliance, you know, as the landlord, there are certain responsibility. For example, the landlord needs to check renters rights to rent. Uh, in practice, how is your firm doing that? And is there any other documents uh, that's legally required to check and how your firms uh, implement yeah. and enforce these uh, checks? Yeah, so our, 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 our lettings agency is all uh, accredited. All our letting staff are qualified. Uh, letting staff. So we obviously follow all the requirements. We ID the uh, the client. We make sure they have the right to rent. Uh, not, not only that, we check their credit uh, references. Uh, we get, uh, uh, you know, their credit history, county court judgments. Uh, and we also get guarantors so that if they're not able to pay the rent, the guarantor will pay the rent. And we've learned this from experience, uh, you know, over the years uh, to make sure that uh, you know our tenants are good tenants and they look after the properties and they pay the rent. Uh, so we do all of those legal requirements uh, and more. Uh, and the second thing is that our investor clients uh, you don't need to worry about that uh, because they are not the landlord uh, mm -hmm. because in our system, we are the landlord. So even if we make a mistake uh, with this, uh, then we are liable we may have to pay a fine if we make a mistake. Obviously, we won't. But even if we do, the owner is not liable because they are the owner, not the landlord. Hmm. I see. Uh, so there's another question. And that, uh, there were some unfortunate incidents uh, involving some development of mold inside a house, which uh, caused uh, the death of a little toddler. So how is your firm going to handle that? I'm Here I'm talking about some social responsibility, how your firm uh, handle yeah. this kind of thing yeah. to make sure that the house is actually suitable and the renters inside live comfortable in, in, in it. Yeah, I think this is a good point. Uh, and and, and the, the thing to understand is that mold only happens when there is damp. Hmm. Damp is the cause of mold. Hmm. And the way we deal with this is that we train our staff to recognize uh, damp, diagnose its causes, and then uh, do the treatments. We do that in-house. So very briefly, Solo, uh, I mean, there are three main reasons for damp. 70% uh, of damp uh, in these type of houses is due to condensation and poor ventilation, especially in the kitchen and the bathroom, but it also in other rooms as well. Uh, about 20% of damp is due to what we call water penetration. This might be a leak in the roof uh, or the gutters or the windows, or it may be a leaking radiator, uh, or uh, it could be pipes or the bathroom. Uh, and less than 10% is due to what we call rising damp, where uh, the damp course, which lies just above the foundation of the walls, uh, was not put in properly or has become defective. Uh, so those are the, 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 the main reasons for damp. And our staff are trained with each of these uh, to recognize it, diagnose it correctly, and then treat it. With the, the main type of damp is simply putting in good uh, extractor funds, educating the tenant about ventilation to prevent condensation. Obviously, with the penetration damp, is the best thing there is to treat the cause, which is... Uh, uh, any leaks, uh, roof leaks or water leaks. And with rising damp, we have our own system where we strip the uh, plaster, put in a new damp course, 
replaster, let it dry, and then redecorate uh, and fix that uh, rising dam. So, you know, we're very confident uh, that our properties uh, are safe from that point of view. And obviously, we do regular inspections, identifying any damp so that we can treat that before there is any mold. And having said that, of course, uh, uh, you know, these issues regarding the property, again, are our liabilities. You know, the, the owner uh, is not going to be uh, in court if there is a damp issue. We will be because on the tenancy agreement, we are the landlord hmm. and we are responsible for this. Yeah? I see. So I uh, understand that there are already thousands of investors as your clients. So what do they uh, want from that investment, actually? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, uh, you know, what investors want uh, really are very simple things. They want to securely own a property, legally fully own a property. Uh, you know, they don't want to have any insecurity regarding that. Then they want steady, good rental income. And they want over the long term for their property to grow in value. And finally, they don't want any of these landlord issues. You know, the ones we mentioned at the beginning, the tenant issues, the hidden costs and the liabilities. And our solutions actually delivers on all of these. In fact, we're probably the only company that does this properly in the UK. And, uh, you know, if investors want this, which I believe is what most people want, then uh, they come to us and we will certainly deliver on that. So my very last question, how can they, uh, the investor and as your clients, ensure that you will deliver what you just promised? <laughs> yes, it's a very good question. Uh, yes, well, I think uh, investors need to develop confidence uh, with the company and they can do that in two ways. Uh, uh, I think, first of all, they need to learn more. I think your videos are very good, but also there's information on the website, uh, our website, we have uh, our own videos. Uh, they can also get a draft agreement once we have their ID so they can see all the terms. They can have a meeting with me uh, or one of the senior directors. And of course, they can visit us uh, and see our operation uh, directly uh, and see our staff and meet our teams. Uh, that will give them some confidence. Uh, and the other thing which they can do is they can look at our track record. You know, over the last 16 years, we have bought, renovated, sold and managed uh, over two and a half thousand houses and they won't see a single significant complaint uh, anywhere about our company. If there was one, I would know about it because everybody, every investor has my mobile number, but there won't uh, be any because you know, we make mistakes, but we fix them. We take responsibility so there won't be any dissatisfied uh, clients. And also they can look at the BBC videos. You know, the BBC has produced five programs on our family business of the last six years. And recently they've actually done two more. Uh, one will be coming out on BBC One in a few months time on the Flexi Furnish range. And there's another program coming out on BBC One uh, uh, in Q1. Uh, and the BBC will not come back and do these every year if there was even a single complaint. So I think people uh, do a bit of research. Uh, and of course, they can speak to you. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you have bought a property. In fact, many of your viewers have bought properties with us. Uh, you know, they can get real experience uh, uh, from people who have actually gone down this route and, and then become confident. You know, many clients come to me uh, and they say, well, you know, it's difficult buying property, too many concerns and these. And I say to them, there's only two decisions you need to make. The first decision is, is what we are offering what you want? And what we are offering is very clear on the website. And this is what we have talked about. This is one. And almost everybody says, yes, this is what I want. Uh, it mm. seems too good to be true, but this is what I want. <laughs> mm. And then the second one is, can you trust us to deliver what we say? And this is a bit more difficult. And this is where they need to do a lot, a lot of research look at our track record and eventually become confident. And once they are, they buy one property and usually they buy more, you know, mm -hmm. over the years they build a portfolio uh, and we look after them for the long term. Indeed. Thank you very much for receiving my interview. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Bye. Nice meeting you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.